why are men or women okay with being the side piece in a relationship? At least be a good side piece and, and do it the right way. I'm not doing that. You oh, know? if she missing all her teeth, then she good. If you know, you know. But yeah, if she missing her teeth, like, babe, you ain't gonna do all of that for me? Hell no. And I don't care how much you love me. <laughs> I'm literally sitting here gritting my teeth because I'm looking at you like... <laughs> What's good, y'all? I'm your host, Asia. And I'm your host, BJ. And, and this, this is, is X the Script. Welcome in, y'all. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Y'all already know when y'all come in <laughs> here is a vibe. So what's up, what's up, what's up? <laughs> Don't you say nothing. Don't even. Don't even say nothing. No, nah, because no. I, I was gonna say because you you know you got your hair <laughs> pressed. You, yeah. you got your hair pressed and impressed. Bitch, I tried to talk about me trying to sing the vibe song. Okay. That's what I was saying. It's if you do it, if you do, you got to get a little crunk and like just swing your hair around. I a little bit. would, but I but can't I know do that, that you in, got it and together. all of this right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 for sure. For just sure. wait till we get off of here and we get out of here, and then and then I'm a, I'm a. <laughs> Do the wild child on We're going to turn hey. it up real quick. Hey, I'm just saying. Hey, do the wild child for me. I'm not tripping. I'm not doing no tripping over on this side. So y'all were trying to go into something like all nasty and everything. I'm not. I'm What's not. the wild child? You know the, what the wild child is. <laughs> Come on now. You know what the, <laughs> the wild child will produce a child. Like It's, it's, it's like that. It's really, no, really like that. No, But now, no. shout out to you. You look looking marvelous in your pink, blue, oh, thank you, yellow, babe. Orange vibe. It's, it's a vibe. Yeah. You look nice as well. Thank you. I'm, yeah. re I'm ready for war. I like when you all casual and everything and yeah. all cute and everything. You put yourself all together and stuff. You know, you don't do that like when we go somewhere. It looks nice. Though. All black. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Yeah, y'all. Good morning. Happy. You know what? I'm just going to stop telling y'all what day it is because... It doesn't even matter. It don't even matter. <laughs> By the time y'all hear this, it's going to be the next day anyway. So good morning, everybody. I hope everybody is having a great day today. Yes, yes, yes. Hope yes. everybody had a great weekend. Everybody stayed safe. Okay, everybody here is an accounted for, Hell I should yeah. say. Hell yeah. You know, we're happy to see everybody here. Thank y'all so much for, like, supporting us and, mm -hmm. you know, chiming in, supporting the channel, showing us love on the downloads, y'all. If y'all haven't yet... Please do us the biggest favor and go and download on all your streaming platforms. Asia and BJ X Script Podcast is everywhere. So make sure y'all download it. Come on over to YouTube. Yes, yes, give yes. us some views and everything. You know, show us some love. And hit, stuff. That, hit that download. The thing about podcasts is like they grow organically. So everybody that's like been sending messages like, why is it y'all only have? I'm like, shoot, that's good. What you mean? Heck okay. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Like, dang. Slow progress is better than no progress. Slow progress is, yes, you're absolutely right. But as long as we're yeah. making progress and moving in the right direction, that's all that matters. Yeah, but at the end of the day, we love what we do. Yeah. So it don't even matter. Yeah, y'all. But we thank you guys for y'all support. A lot of people messaged me, hit me up, even on our last podcast that we put out, too. The last episode that we did, they appreciated us for just really, really kind of diving a little bit deep and kind of opening up to you guys. So yeah. I think the transparency is probably like what people really like want to see from yeah. us. It is what it is, though. All we can do is just speak our truth and keep it 100, though. Right. So. Right. October. Y'all, if y'all didn't know, we have a movie channel, Asia and BJ. It's called Reeling with Asia and BJ. R-E-E-L-I-N with Asia and BJ. Exactly how it sounds. And we do movie reactions. And last year we did... All scary movies last yeah. year, we had which a full, was so much fun. We had a full Oktoberfest. Yes. Have you want to call it a horror, horror movie month? It was fire. Whatever you want to write, yeah. Scaretober. Okay, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, what's great? I used to do this because, and what the reason why I got that idea was because, remember when I started I'm Still Asia, mm -hmm. which is now Asia and BJ React? Y'all go over there and subscribe to that channel too, okay? But... Before it was I'm Still Asia, and for October, I did literally nothing but like scary reactions. So, right. all those ghost story reactions and stuff like that, y'all, y'all know y'all were y'all were tripping out on me, okay? And so, when we came up with the movie channel, <laughs> which was like what a year and a half later down About the line, a year, something like that, yeah. or so, and I'm like, babe, we should do the scary movies for October. And last year, we had so much fun, y'all enjoyed yeah. it a lot. Some people were like, Scary movies ain't my thing, but you know, 
I think I think by the it's by the, not my thing either, but y'all I, enjoy me watching them. I think by the time <laughs> by the by the end of October, I feel like a lot of people was like, "Nah, I'm in, I'm in on this. <laughs> this is this is just getting too big. It's getting too hilarious." Yeah, please don't stop doing scary movies. And then the biggest thing too is like when we started watching like our first movie. <laughs> I remember like the very first scary movie that we did. Like you were scared, <laughs> and a lot of people thought that you was just playing like. Nah, she just doing that for the camera. And I'm no. like, no, she really scary no, for real. I really like, am. you don't watch any scary movies. No. I can't think of any scary movies that we watch, like, off screen other than October. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's like, so funny, though, because even as a kid, I can remember, like, even as, <laughs> as a kid, my you mom. Told me, you told me, like, when, you, when your mom took y'all. <laughs> I remember, like, I can't remember. I almost want to say it was, like, Gosh, for some reason, I want to say it was like Freddy Krueger. Like, that's the only scary person I can remember, like, ever. And I was I was young. I think that movie came out in, like, 1984, 85 or something. So I was really young when, when we went to go see it at the theaters. And my mom was like, you can't see this movie because you're going to be scared. And you're going to want to, and you're not going to come in my room. And you're not getting in my bed. Mm-hmm. And that, <laughs> this is my mom. And I'm like, please, mama. Please, y'all, I see the movie when I tell you I'm scared out of my damn mind, okay? Scared out of my mind. That was the ba- that was the birth of the finger mask. Not to mention, you remember me telling you, too, like, my sister used to tell me, like, the red eyes would be looking through through the window at me. Right. Like, yep. <laughs> I remember, like, she would tell me, like, red eyes would be looking at me through the, through the window, like, at night. And I remember we came home from watching, like, the Freddy Krueger movie. Yeah. Doesn't his eyes turn red and at some point? Uh, I am don't I know. just thinking Probably. That? I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember, but. He's scary as hell. All I know is that my mom had cut the washing machine and dryer on that night, mm-hmm. and it was so loud. You know how we be, you know, y'all don't. You just turn all these bumps and the, noises. Yeah, because it sounds like the washing machine is walking around the house, the yeah. dryer, whatever it is. <laughs> she started the washer and dryer that night. And we had been to the movies that same night. And when I tell you, like, my sister was like, yeah, the red eyes are going to be looking at you through the window. You better not get out of the bed. That sounded like something she would say. Yeah. You better not get out of the bed. When I tell you, oh, my gosh, y'all, literally the very first time I'm a, I'm, I'm ashamed to admit I peed in the bed that night because I was so scared to get out of the bed. Like It's not that she bad. She terrified me. Yeah. No, bad. I really thought, and, I, and what's crazy is, like, my bed was by the window, so I would look. At the window, like just staring at the window the entire night. I see the red eyes. Yeah. The red eyes is gonna I, look I, at I me. I think I think the one that did it for me when I was younger, <laughs> the one that did it for me was definitely like Friday the Thirteenth. Really, like, like the first Friday oh, the Thirteenth, maybe the second one. Like the first couple of ones, like those were the ones that would keep me up all night. Yeah, you know. Oh man. Hell yeah. Yeah. See, it does, and we did how many movies did we do? We did. Uh, I we can't did about remember. nine, maybe ten. We did a lot. We yeah. did a lot because then we put a lot of them on Patreon too, y'all. So now, which um, one was your favorite one though? Last year. Yeah, last year. Um, yeah. The scariest one I think for me was definitely uh, Poltergeist. Poltergeist. Poltergeist like, was good. Poltergeist was good. Me. Out that dang there old clown. Here. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> Please don't. Please don't remind me. I've not watched that movie since we watched it that day. I didn't even go watch the reaction. I was yeah. so scared. Yeah, I think the one for me and the Exorcist. Oh, that oh, was I yeah. think that, that was the one for me where I was like, I'm convinced. That, like that oh, that movie. That movie, Paul, oh. Exorcist. The Exorcist, yeah. With her, with her walking up that the stairs, to a ho- backwards, oh, like she was crawling. My gosh, babe! <laughs> and then her head, and, and that one for me, it was just, it was just like crazy how she would be talking, like just that whole theme of like <laughs> exorcism. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Come you know over here. Saying? I feel like that was like the most classic scary movie <laughs> to date for me, as far as just like. You know, be, because, you know, you have a lot of, like, scary movies yeah. that were scary when you was yes. a child. Yes. But then there are certain movies that will just terrify and scare the shit out of you, oh, even as an adult. Oh, my gosh. I agree 100%. So, I think, for me, it was the exit for forgot. sure. I I think that one's going to be the top. That one, for sure, is, like, number one. 
And you know what? I think Exorcist, I think that might have been the one movie that probably had the most most views in October. Really? Was Exorcist? From all of our horror, scary movies. You I think, to, it, you might I think be it was right. the Exorcist. I might have to tap in and look, but yeah. I think that's the one that got the most views. Y'all can go to the channel and look on uh, the Real and Asian BJ channel. Yeah. It's actually a playlist for all of our scary movies that we did. So if y'all want to check them out and see all the scary movies, even ones that we haven't done in October, because we've done a couple outside of October, but... We mostly did like a, a plethora of horror movies in October. So make sure y'all chime in and check those out too, okay? And if and if you hear from the Reeling with Asian BJ fam on that side over there, <laughs> drop yeah. a comment down below. Let me know you came in here to represent, okay? And even to this day, <laughs> y'all, I cannot get Asia to watch a scary movie with me. I'm not, I'm you not still don't do watch Look, any of them. I only do that so, for the fam, okay? Yeah. I only do that for y'all. <laughs> the, the, only, the only movie I remember taking you to that was scary was Dawn of the Dead. That was probably like the only one. And even when we watched it, the first 10 <laughs> minutes, you did the finger mask. So, like I said, the finger mask is you know, real. The first 10 minutes. It's the a, whole movie. It's Asia's natural reaction. It just got worse and worse. It like did. It did. Oh, okay. So maybe we, we should watch that one for real this time. Like, <laughs> maybe I feel like, you know, I... I, I got it in my system now. I got scary bones now. I can you, just you know, to revisit it, it and, and actually watch it I'm this not time. Scared. And actually watch it this time. Shoot. Yeah. Hey, hey. I'm here for it. Okay. I'm okay. here for it. I'm here for the vibe. Yeah, y'all. So all that to say, make sure y'all chime in yeah. to our to our movie channel this year. We're gonna be dropping all these horror movies and we're gonna have a great time back to doing back to back. it. We should actually go live and find out what the fam <laughs> wants us to rag to first before we jump into it. Maybe we can do that. We should do that today. Very possible, actually. yeah. Okay. But okay. I have a little quick icebreaker. We haven't done this in a minute, actually. We haven't done icebreakers, y'all. We haven't done confessionals in a while. We're not getting them to them today, but I do have a couple that I want to get through at some point. So, you know, make sure y'all stay chimed in for that. And also, before we get into all of this, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, smash the notification bell so you don't miss Absolutely. any videos from Asia and BJ. Like I said, tap into all of our, our streaming platforms for our podcast. Y'all can listen to us on iTunes, Spotify, uh, iHeart. Everywhere that there's a stream, anywhere that you can stream, yes, okay. So we chime are in there, yeah. Um, okay, since you think that you just all smart and everything, babe, oh no, can you name the top 10 most popular sports of 2023? Not in the USA, just the top 10 most popular sports of 2023. N can you do the top five? We may give you the top five, yes. Okay, I'm gonna throw track and field in there. I'm gonna throw soccer in there. I'm gonna put Wait, but what where? You gotta name it five, four, three, two, one. Oh, five, four, three, two, one. I'm already I'm already going. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. One, I'm gonna go with football, which is European soccer. Okay. Two, I'm gonna go with American baseball. Okay. Two. Three, I'm gonna go with world track and field. Four, I'm gonna go with football. Okay. And then I got one more, right? Yep. Okay. And then for five, and you said around the world. What are they all what are they doing all around the world? I'm gonna say cricket. Cricket. <laughs> for five, because I don't know. I couldn't think of any other that would be the top five. Okay. Yeah. All right, you ready? Yeah. So <laughs> number one. And and what is this based on too? Uh this is from Sports Monkey. Okay. Okay. So number one, you actually got right, which is soccer. You didn't have it right the first time because you had soccer at number five. <laughs> right. Yeah, I just had to re redo that because they just had world soccer. Yeah. So soccer's number one with right. 3.5 billion estimated fans. Mm -hmm. uh, most popular in Europe, Africa, Asia, and America. At number two, you said it was baseball. American baseball. Uh, number two is actually cricket. Believe it or not. What? I put that at five. I was really just playing. <laughs> Are you Since kidding? Cricket is 2.5 estimated fans, like 2.5 billion estimated fans, and it's most popular in Asia, Australia, and the UK. You lying. No. <laughs> I, literally, I, I, I no. literally was playing with that number five. But for it to be in the top five, yeah. I'm very, very surprised. Okay. Wow. So wow, you're wow, wow, a wow, good wow. guess, though, because you did get it in the top five, hey, though. Yeah. So that was a good one. Um, <laughs> number three, I can't believe you didn't even say this, is basketball. Of 2023, only reason why I, <laughs> only reason why I didn't say it, well, I mean, they did they did have the NBA Finals, so. Yeah, but, that again, was, it's worldwide, so. 
it's most popular in the U.S., Canada, China, and the Philippines. And it has uh, estimated of 2.2 billion uh, estimated fans. Yeah, I'm tripping with that one. Okay, so you didn't even get that one on here. You said even. number three uh, was track and field. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you said your three was track and field was what you said. I thought it, I knew that it, that it's in there somewhere because, like I said, they just had like the world, you know, the, the world tryouts and all that stuff for the Olympics. Yeah. So that's why I was like, it got to be in the top five somewhere. Okay. I mean, but you know, when you think, I guess when you think about it's it not, like that, like. U.S., Canada, China, and the Philippines are like super huge in basketball, like right, especially right, China right. and Canada. But that's but that's what I'm saying. I was thinking about as far as worldwide. Yeah, it is worldwide. Okay, well, yeah, basketball is worldwide, but I, I didn't think it, I didn't think they they had it in the top five. I thought it'd be like six. And number four, you also you said football hmm. was your number four. American football. And number four is field hockey. Field hockey. Okay. What that's- is field hockey though? Is that the ice? Yeah, hockey? it should be. Yeah. What is field hockey? That should be. I, I feel I, like there's something else though. Field, field hockey is it called? Is ice hockey the same as field? Like, do we just it, call it, it, it ice ha- hockey? It would have to be field hockey because hockey is worldwide. Okay. As far as ice hockey. Well, it's most popular in Europe, Africa, Asia, and Australia. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say Canada. Wow. And they have uh, about two uh, two billion estimated fans. And lastly, you said number five was cricket, which now we know <laughs> I can't is number it. two. I can't believe it is two, though. <laughs> wow. Number five Whoa. is tennis. <sighs> you know what? But they did just have the U.S. Open. But, but I didn't think that I it would be in the top tennis. five. I would not have guessed tennis That's what I'm saying. You're top, top five. five. Okay. Well, let me give you the rest then. So, so tennis has an uh, estimated fans of one billion. It's most popular in Europe. Americas and Asia. So I guess North America, South America also. Mm -hmm. And then number six was volleyball. Can you believe that? With 900 million estimated fans. I would have never guessed that. Um, Most popular in Asia, Europe, Americas, and Australia. Mm -hmm. Number seven is table tennis. That's one I would have have (laughs) never known that one. I would have guessed that. I would have not guessed that. That's at 850 million. Uh, estimated fans in Asia, Europe, Africa, and America. Number eight is baseball. Mm-hmm. Number How eight. Has it eight though? Can you? But, believe, but I can't you think, believe it. But if you think about baseball, is really only popular here in America. When you really think about it, I feel like it's that's, most popular here. That's why when you was asking me like the top five, I was trying to give you some like because I know track and field is like worldwide. I know cricket is worldwide. Yeah. Well. Okay. Baseball has 500 million estimated fans, which a majority are probably yeah. my guess. Okay, yeah. but it says uh, it's most popular in U.S., Japan, Cuba, and the Dominican Republic. See, that's not a lot. Yeah, no, oh, it's not. Yeah, those are small places. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. okay. And then you have American football slash rugby. They're in the same category. It looks like, mm-hmm. which I guess they're kind of similar, kind of. Yeah, they are. I don't know much about Some's, rugby. I'm not going to lie. They're, they're similar. Okay. So American Eight football and, and rugby, no. uh, they have 410 estimate, 410 million estimated fans, and they're most popular USA mainly, France, England, New Zealand, and South um, uh, I, South Africa. I can see that, South Africa. Yeah. You know what? New Zealand, I forgot about that because we know. It's huge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's huge. And lastly, is number 10 was golf. I wouldn't even have put golf all the way up there. I wouldn't have even put it on the list. I feel like just I feel is rightfully so at ten. Yeah, you know. Um, but the one that the one out of all of those that surprised me would be cricket. Really? Yeah. Why? Because it was so far up. One because I don't know much about. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm saying because it's so high up. Okay. On that list, but like I said, I don't know much about cricket. But a lot of those are going to be based on like where you live in the world, like how many parts of the world that actually participate in some of these sports. Right. Yeah. I was thinking too for, too too much from like my American standpoint with the baseball. That's what I kept saying is worldwide. I kept emphasizing worldwide. It's yeah. not just American but I, but, sports. But but I thought <laughs> but I thought that they played baseball in a lot more areas than what you said. Now hey. you know. So so your top five, you only got one right. You had <laughs> soccer at the very top. So that was actually a really good, a really good guess. I yeah. would have guessed soccer first too. Not going to lie. That yeah. would have been my first one. Right. It, because that's the biggest worldwide sport. On to the next wow. thing, y'all. That's going to bring us right on into our next segment. Was Deion you, Sanders has been showing out. Was you surprised by the game? I really was. I, that's, you know why I, that's why I got on what I got on today. <laughs> because, like I said, I feel like I'm still 
coming down off of a high of just like super, super competitive football. I feel so completely. proud of him, though. Like, you know, I'm not like, you know, I'm not like a huge advocate football player and stuff, but I know that. That runs largely in your family, and y'all are diehard football fans, yeah, like, yeah. just from how you grew up. So even just watching, though, like, the story you kind of have told me with Deion Sanders, I'm like, man, that that's really cool. Like, he's out mm-hmm. there really changing lives in the game of football with these kids. Like, I feel like that's an inspirational and just, type and, of And really just making story. a real impact. You yeah, know I mean? absolutely. Like, you know, he, that's what coaches are to do, but – you know, for him to kind of be making the wave that he is with, like, shoot, if I know Dion is at Colorado, like, I know that? Yeah. Oh, you're doing something because, you know, la- I'm the last one <laughs> to find out. Okay. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and, I mean, this game that they played with Colorado State, this was like, it's probably going to be one of the best games of the year. Like you for think me, so? and you you saw how I was acting when the game was on. Oh, my I was gosh. going crazy. I was what going the bonkers heck? because – like the penalties that was going on, how many times they were throwing the penalty flag. I was like, Colorado State, they got it out for Colorado. It was almost like the coaches had a pep talk with the players, and I feel like they put a bounty out on Colorado because no way. they were no playing. No way. The college? It was getting chippy out there. It was getting chippy. I thought I thought they only did like stuff like that in, in like, I mean, I guess not, huh? No, I'm just saying the coaches and them trying to coach the players up to say that we got to play hard. We got to play beyond the whistle, you know, just really, really like putting it in their heads that they got to go out there and do extra. You know what I mean? Oh, well, they already knew like they had to come out there and show out. Come on now. You're going up against Deion Sanders. I'm going to be like, I'm going to be telling all my little players and stuff. Y'all come out. Yeah. Yeah. Get it together. Yeah. You can go out there and, and have it together. But what <laughs> I'm saying is like it, it's a difference in, in going out there and having it together and playing professionally and, and doing it the right way. But then it's a difference in. When you going out there and you kind of really like telling them to go out there and hurt somebody and then doing oh. it and doing it oh. del- and doing it deliberately. Wait, you know what I mean? Is that what he told them to do? Babe, I'm not finished. I'm not putting words in nobody's mouth, but e- even like when you listen to like some of these talk shows, uh, sports shows in the morning, a lot of them was talking like it, it, it was too chippy. You could tell that. What? Like you could tell. Wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> well, I didn't. I didn't think that's. Was... You couldn't. You couldn't tell how. Even like that late hit on Travis Hunter. Is that the guy that got hurt? Like, he was really, really hurt. Yeah. Like, he yeah, laid yeah. there for a while. Yeah, he had, like, a lacerated liver. That's what I'm saying. Like, Is that what? Yeah. Oh, my god. You, you didn't see the hit, but I showed it to you later, and I was like, even when you look at that hit, it was, like, way, way late. It was, like, way too late. I feel like that's what I that, – is that when you got – you was up screaming at the TV? I feel like I that heard you at one, one point ones. you was screaming. You was that, was, <laughs> that one, and then it was another, like, rough in the pass on Shador Sanders when, when, they, when the linebacker hit him. And just like completely pancaked him after he threw oh, the ball. Oh, that's right too, because you did tell me his kids are are playing also on yeah, the team. Yeah, quarterback as well. and then cornerback too. Yeah, but but me, I just I just like what he bringing to Colorado. How he bringing like excitement to college football again. And now it's just like it's it's not just a story to talk about because it is. It's, it's like sweeping the nation, but it's also just like a a good heartfelt story for him mm, to be on. going where he's going yeah. and and just really like just changing the culture. Yeah. And, and that's what you want when you have a, a, a coach coming in to coach football and to come to a new a new state or yeah. in a new university. You really want to be able like to galvanize, you know, the students, galvanize like the student players and really like have them really excited to be there. To play you know? and everything and, like and, that. And then to give them like a national spotlight too, because last year Colorado they was one and eleven. Dang. They only won one game last year and now they three and zero. Oh. Didn't they win that game though? They won this one, right? Yeah, you see, and, and a lot of people. Wait, like, how many have they won? They're three and zero. Oh, so they haven't lost. They haven't lost. That's wow. what I'm saying. Wow. And, and y'all, Asia, Asia, she couldn't hang. She couldn't hang Saturday night. <laughs> they get, and you know, you know, they was like they they two hours behind. They was in Colorado. Oh, so okay. So you it you was went to sleep on early. really late. Yeah, it was on really that late. that game was on late. Yeah. A lot of my friends in New York, they were like, "Hey, I stayed up to like two o'clock." Watching watch this thing on game. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Let's move on. Pop culture, y'all. So I saw two, and I just so happened to see this that Jenny May and oh, Jeezy. Jenny Mai. Is know. it how do you say Jenny Mai? I think it's how you say her name. And Jeezy. Jenny Mai, yeah. And Jeezy. You like I what? thought they were gonna I be was, forever. Bay, I was really rooting for them. She literally I put was, the like, cutest little them. video on her Instagram with her baby girl. And it's so crazy to even see this because 
I can remember watching her on uh, Jenny Mai on was it The View the she View. was on? Yep. I watched her when she was on the on The View. I feel like that's when I really got to know who she was and listened to her talk and stuff like that. And she was married to the other guy. And one thing that she used to always talk about was, you know, her not ever wanting to have children and like not for selfish reasons. It's just something she just was always like she wasn't going to do. But then she got with Jeezy, and then she here she goes. She pops out this beautiful baby girl. Oh, my know, gosh. She's she just is adorable. Oh, my gosh. When you look at her, I'm just like, she is like the perfect blend. The of, cutest. She's like the perfect blend of African-American and Vietnamese. Yes. I'm just like, oh my those gosh. cheeks. And her mom <laughs> is hilarious. Like her mom, remember she, mm-hmm. she used to bring her mom on there all the time, and her mom be on there talking crazy. Her mom would be on there talking crazy as well. Mama Ma. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen a few things because I know they had a, like a rocky relationship before. Yeah, they did. And they kind of smoothed things out. They did, yeah. Uh, I've seen some things it, with her on. All that to say, she had a, a really cute video on Instagram with her and she was praying. She They were sitting there and she was like, I pray for daddy and I'm praying for this. And then she had on a shirt that says, I know I look just like my daddy or something like that. And I, I just thought it was the cutest video. And then know, literally but the you next know what? day. That's what I'm saying. Go ahead. Like the next day. I saw like a headline saying that they were like Jeezy had filed for divorce. And I'm like, yes. what? No way. And you know what? The day before he filed for divorce, like I had to go back and look at some of this stuff. The day before he filed for divorce on Instagram, he put like a little cryptic message, something along the lines of like, you know, where I'm going right now is, is you know, where I'm going in life. Some people can't go with me. But you can read between the message now that. It came out that they got a divorce. Now I'm reading into that match. It's like, oh, he was already putting it out there saying that wherever he going in life right now, she's not going to be going with him. I don't know. I guess I can't really say because I'm on the outside looking in and I'm not I'm not one like I'm just speculating. OK, but I'm Yo. like, dang, she put this little cute video out and she praying for daddy and telling the baby to pray for her father and blah, blah, blah. It's just the cutest thing. And I then know. and then that happens. And so I'm like. Did she not know that this was happening? That's what I'm saying. I read the headlines and I read, I finally had a chance to look at it and read it. Yeah. Like they already had been separated. When that video came out, it's kind of like a, like a message or, you know? Yeah. Oh. Because they, they weren't even together when she put that out. But they on were the already table, separated. No. Because if you look, like again, I done went back too. Mm-hmm. But if you look on the table, it was a book. It was a book that Jeezy wrote. It was like a- It's a bestseller right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of the bestsellers. And it was the book on the table and everything. So I, that's why I was so confused. Like, yeah. what? Yeah. What? Wait a minute. Okay. Well, today, y'all- Oh. Oh, there was one other thing, too. I saw this in the news. Y'all, let me read y'all this article from CNN. Did you hear about this story that was in in, uh, Bronx, New York? Okay. This actually came from CNN. And I I brought this up yesterday because I saw this, but I saw this on a a celebrity's feed. And the person that actually put it out there, I almost didn't even believe that it was real. And then I saw it again. You said the Bronx? It was the Bronx, yeah. Yeah. Two people are charged with murder after a one-year-old dies, three children hospitalized from suspected suspected opioid exposure at a Bronx daycare. Can you imagine dropping your kid off to go to go and and you got to go to work and you drop your your little one-year-old baby off at daycare and then you aren't going to come pick him up alive. Oh, I thought I thought you were about to say something else in regards to the Bronx, but like the Bronx is just rough, rough and rugged I mean, all the way around. But daycare though. It is the Bronx, but we're talking about a daycare center. This is where you feel your children are safe oh to go God. to school when yeah. you leave them. That's you know, crazy. so regardless that it's in the Bronx. I kn- I know. Okay, it, yeah. it may that's not be I, the best that's facility. I, that's why I said when you said the Bronx, I'm like, okay, what happened now in the Bronx? It's <sighs> always something crazy in the headlines. This is awful. I felt like this is just tragic. Two suspects have been arrested and charged with murder in connection with the death of a one-year-old boy after he and three other children were exposed to suspected opioids at the Bronx daycare on Friday. Gree Mendez, 36, and Carlisto Acevedo Brito, oh, 41, man were arrested Saturday after Nicholas Dominici died and two two-year-old boys and an eight-month-old girl were exposed to the F word that has been taken over the nation and suffered acute opioid intoxication at Divino Nino Daycare in the Bronx. They were charged with murder, manslaughter, assault, endangering the welfare of child and criminal possession of a controlled substance. According to court documents, Mendez is the owner and operator of the daycare and Brito is her husband's cousin 
and a tenant who resides in a bedroom within the daycare. New York City Damn, police. Damn, that's crazy. Ain't it? New York City police were called to the daycare around 2.30 p.m. Friday where they discovered three unconscious children. First responders administ- administered Narcan, an opioid reversal treatment, to all three children in an attempt to revive them. NYPD chief of detectives Joseph Kenny said at news conference early Saturday, two children survived, but one one-year-old, Nicholas, died. Another two-year-old boy whose family had taken him home from the daycare around 12.15 was found acting lethargic and unresponsive by his mother. He was brought to the Bronx Care Health System where he was administered Narcan, which Kenny said saved his life. The three survivors are doing fine. A kilogram of fentanyl was discovered in an area where children napped at the Bronx Daycare Center. They found three kilogram press devices Two inside the hallway closet and one inside. Why would you have that shit in a daycare? <laughs> what, what are you what, doing? What idiots. Like, whatever happens to them, whatever type of sentence that they hand these people, they should be under the jail. Yeah. This oh, listen crazy. to this. The fentanyl was laying underneath a mat where children had been sleeping earlier. The nap area is a back room of the facility. The residue itself, like I said, it's that strong, Kenny said. One grain, two grains of fentanyl can take down a grown man. So even the residue itself for a small child would cause All it has death. to do is just touch your skin. That's it. Mm-hmm. That is it. I cannot believe in your right mind. That you would even bring a substance like that around children. The thing is, because is that they, it sounds like they're running it out of daycare. Oh, absolutely, yeah, so. absolutely. And y'all got sloppy and yeah. and and left it around the kids. And, and for it to be found under a mat where the kids are sleeping, yeah, but is all, very careless. But of all things, like that, like I'm, I can't say I can't say that word, but you know, like like that's like the most destructive, dangerous drug right now on the market that everybody's trying to take. That you know, they they trying to pretty much eradicate that period. Right. And and if you're getting caught with that, like you already know, like if if somebody dies from your negligence by handling that drug, you go to jail for life. Like they don't even play with that. And for them to have it in the daycare around children. Like, like, like just like to some be that careless ha- though. I think that's what's really like irking people is like how can you be so careless to put kids around something? You let something them like, sleep. Something like that. That's what next I'm to the place where you had this. so so this must have probably been like some type of delivery spot or something, like where you were leaving this under the mat and they had access to this. Like why especially, first of all, why are the kids sleeping on the floor next to the mat? Especially and, and then they got <laughs> paraphernalia and all kind of things. I heard some headlines, I heard some news, but when it comes to children though, like Yeah. Young, innocent, infant children like that, like my heart just breaks for them for those young children having to like go through that due to the negligence of some dumbass people. You know? Very. Very like you can't be more stupid, especially to be operating something like that and running an operation like that where you are caring for (sighs) children and knowing that the exposure of this, the potential exposure of this, just a little piece is enough to kill a man Mm -hmm. and wouldn't kill a a, a child. And you have this stuff just just lying around for them like I can't like a one year old. Well, they right. A one-year-old baby. Well, they're right for charging mm. them with those charges. Like, Absolutely, hell yeah, they are. Sure, for a fact. I definitely want to follow up on that story. When and I tell you, I would be like the highest degree of angry. Like, oh, that's beyond angry. You, outrage. You, just you, you'd be ready to crash out over something <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? Man, the thing is, is that you know, granted, it is it is the Bronx, but that doesn't discount the fact right. that it, you, it, you are in a not. child care facility. Oh. <sighs> Really, re- y'all chime in on this and let me know what y'all think about this. Like, I can't even imagine. Like, even for you know, grandparents out there that drop their grandbabies off, or I feel like a lot of it is just like a lack of just human compassion and care for just care for humans. I I just feel like people think that other people are just expendable, and at the end of the day, it's just yeah, that's sickening. It is. So you even think about that. Absolutely. I agree 100%. Small, young children. I can't even. We're going to get into Ooh. some of the questions that uh, <laughs> that we didn't get a chance to answer before. And you guys send a, us questions to get our opinions and stuff. Yeah. So shout out to everybody. If you want to send us questions or you want to get our advice or yeah. you want to hear our thoughts on something, you can go to our website 
at www.asiambj.com and type it in, send it to us, and it will go on this list, y'all. We'll make sure that we get to it. You can also send, like, your confessionals, like anything you want to tell us, anything you want to... You know, stay anonymous on oh, it got, stuff. Yeah, you know they want to stay anonymous. <laughs> Everything <laughs> will stay anonymous. So even if y'all send us questions that, you know, seem a little bit suspect or whatever, y'all, you're just going to get an honest opinion and feedback on it, but you will remain anonymous. Just know that. Why are men or women okay with being the side piece in a relationship? Because you know that word gets thrown around a lot, especially <laughs> like in, in our culture and things like that as far as like, man, she just my side piece. Or, nah, that's just my side piece. He, he my side piece. First, tell me what is a side piece? What is the definition of a side piece? You a sideline hoe, in other words, okay? You the one that's <laughs> just there to basically get what you, sp- like, and when I call you, that's when I need you. Other than that, I don't need you yeah. for nothing else because I'm not leaving the woman that I'm with or the man that I'm with, so on and so forth. I think it's just because people aren't, like, they don't want that attachment. And really, like, having some type of relationship like that, like, back to these whole transactional relationships, like, that's all it is. And, so you got females out there that willingly do stuff like that because they, they're only in it for just one thing. One, they, they either want sex or they or they get money as well at the same time. And I feel it's like it's like, a money thing. It's, especially, absolutely. Especially, like, when it comes to, like, celebrities or it comes with somebody that has money. Yes. Whether you're, like, an entertainer or a rapper or a singer. Easy. Uh, a football player, prof- you know, professional sports. It makes it easier for a woman or for a dude to say that, okay, I'll be, I'll be okay being on the sideline. But a lot of times it comes with... That side piece comes, comes with, with some price. kind of benefit. It yeah. comes with some kind of price. Yeah. You're going to have to pay the price to, to to be that type of person. But some females, just from a female perspective, like some females are just like, they just out there like that. They just don't care. And really it's like all I want from him is sex and maybe a little bit of attention. And then and then when we done with that, like I can go my way and he can go his way and and we done. Like, he going to put some gas in my tank. Talking about she left pound town. <laughs> left pound town. He might, he might pay my, 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 my rent for the month or something, and then, and then I'll be on my way. But I feel like, I mean, to call it for what it is is like some whole shit. You know, you got, you got a lot of females out here that, that's willing to do it. And, and from my standpoint, it's going to be more females that's going to be chosen as a side piece than it's going to be males, males chosen as a side piece. I, I just feel like it's that. just always... That's just the way that it just goes. It's not imp- most like of the it's time. not unheard of though. Yeah. Because you know? I because I feel like most dudes not gonna really wanna stick around and be like the side piece to a degree. But not just that, but I feel like most women like if they are cheating or if they are like dating multiple men, most of them aren't gonna have like side side dudes. You know what I mean? I feel like it's it's always gonna be more dudes that's gonna have like side pieces, you know. That's just how it goes. Just like you said, I feel like the benefit of them is because of who that person is and what they could possibly potentially provide for them. And most of these side pieces, like, they okay with being a side piece because they know, okay, oh, I'm striking gold now because I'm dating this professional player or this rapper or whoever he is. So, oh, I'm okay with having a baby because I know that if I have a baby, at least this baby will be a paycheck. (laughs) Exactly. And you have females that just think like that. But sometimes you got dudes out there that's like giving them the runaround and make them feel like, you know, maybe like when we do have sex and and then, you know, we laying up there and then and then he'd be like, oh, baby, you know, I got to go back home to, to my wife and my kids. And, right. you know, but I'm going to always be here for you. I'm going to always be holding you down. And and, you know, it's like these these false promises. Mm-hmm. And some people are I mean. To call it for what it is, like you got people out there that's just that needy and that, oh, man. that grimy, where they like, okay, you know, they just that gullible to think that, like, they gonna really be there for them, and and really, it's like, man, you got to find out the hard way, and maybe when it's too way. late, perhaps you do have a baby, and this dude ain't got ain't got shit, okay, like literally. Yeah, but she's stupid. If she's going to do that, because I'm like, hey, <laughs> females, if you're going to be a side piece, I mean, at least, not it, 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 at least be a good side piece and, and do it the right way. But sometimes it's not that she's stupid. Like, it. she's led to believe that he's going to leave her, that that all along you thought he was going to come be with you and he was doing the same shit to you that he was doing the, to the last, to, to you. Like That's why I brought up with the other scenario <laughs> when you was talking about old girl being a side piece and knowing that she is and, and he making false promises. I'm like, she's stupid to think that. 
he gonna leave her for you and thinking that while he with you that he won't leave you for another female. Right. It's like you are you are already falling in line with this pattern already. <laughs> right. I'm like you already know. It's like the calm before the storm. You know how this is about to go. You know how it's about to play out. Like if I was one of these dudes out here that had money like that and I was single, I wouldn't be out here with a lot of females like that saying and having side pieces because Females will line you up Ooh, all day long. And they will get you so caught up. That's what I'm saying. And I, I wouldn't even want to be one of those dudes out here that, that's getting multiple females pregnant and just got babies left and right and just Why all over the place. Why do you think that Cannon do it? Like, you know what I mean? He just like kids. As yeah, he he, but he but he has a little <laughs> bit more. <laughs> he, Nick Cannon got a little bit more of like an arrangement. He got like a, like a real arrangement. No, absolutely not. There's no way I. So can... you saying that 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 they side pieces? Is that like the new millennial? Like, is that something that's millennial? Like, what it? What the fuck is that? Like, where they do that at? I I just feel like he look at Nick Cannon. Like, Babe, he, he, that is not a trend. You got get something that you, you got to can... get him to okay on this one because he was all he already was married to one of the hottest chicks in the game. He was already married to Mariah. It didn't work out. Now he just feel like I don't want to ever get married. I don't, I don't ever want to be in that situation again. But I do want children. I do want to have children with responsible women. But what because kind of some kids of the women do you are, think are going to come from a relationship like that? Like, what are you teaching your children if all you're doing is going around and making these arrangements with women yeah. to have a baby with? Like, what kind of shit is that? But you, You're not going <laughs> to live with them. You're not going to be there. Like, you're going to miss out on a lot of things. Like, being who you are, yeah. he already has a busy schedule. So mm -hmm. what? Like, y you get an hour today. This baby gets an hour a day. This baby gets one next week. This baby. And then what? How long does it take for you to come back around? Because yeah. isn't there like 12 of them now? I don't know. It's, I really it's don't like know. like 10 or 12. I, I, I feel exactly what you're saying, but I, I just feel like at the end of the day. I think that's a it, really shitty, fucked up mentality, and it's, it's really, really foul really? of him. Like, I think that's very fucking selfish. Yes, I do, because at the end of the day, the woman is left to raise the kid. Not necessarily. What, the, what do you mean? <laughs> Who's doing it? Not that she said that she's okay with doing it. She's stupid. But like some of the women that's in his life, they're like lifelong friends. Like, it, like it's not just like he just picking a woman and having a no, baby with her. No, he these are actual like people that are like really no. in his life that they actually really spend time together. I don't care how you friendly we are. My child needs a father twenty four seven, like here, present, visible. I, I see what you're saying, but like I don't care what kind of friends we are. Like I can be friends with you. Like you know. I, Anybody could be friends. Yeah, but my thing is I can't judge what somebody else does because I'm not there to see what they do 24-7. But look, okay, like if you're going to satisfy me with a $1 million check every month, perhaps I'll think about having a baby for you since I'm your friend. Absolutely. Yeah. Why not? Why are you looking at me looking at you <laughs> like that? Because I'm just like, I mean. Because, like, like I said, you don't know what the ins and outs of what they do. So, I so what I'm saying is that care. you can't judge people for what they do in the life they that, that they live because Babe, because from what i've seen you and, are breaking up homes like no you're, no, you're, you're not, not okay so because so I, be, name because, a time when you've seen him with all all i mean not that he doesn't but i'm like but that's what i'm saying i have seen that what is the outing like when you come in with all these friendship baby mamas like what are you teaching your son what is your daughter gonna see like oh mom like Oh, my dad is Nick Cannon, but like, you know, how did y'all meet? Like, why did y'all have me? Oh, because we were friends and we made an arrangement to no, have you. Like, no, what? But, no, but but you but you just putting it to the to the emphasis that a friend. Like, I know it's more than just a friend, but they're like lifelong friends. Like, they just didn't come out the wazoo like a year ago. Like, these are people that he's like really been with and have a real true relationship with. So they're not just people that he just picking completely to have babies with hold on now maybe one or two of them yeah you, you know I'm, I'm literally sitting here gritting my teeth because i'm looking at you like <laughs> you said all the wrong damn things right now okay i had to think about that like 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 because because he, he he do got a lot of baby mamas babe he got a lot of baby mamas and i'm just like he do got a lot of baby mamas I, even for me i'm just like I just feel like I would be stretched so thin by having like that. Like even if me and you had 10 kids, I would be like in over my head, mm -hmm. which like shout out to the to the people out there with eight and nine and 10 and 11 <laughs> kids. OK, shout out to y'all. Y'all are the real MVPs. Uh, I'll try. I'll try. I'll try hard to like give them like the, the reason like the. No, give him a <laughs> no. 
I think anybody that you ask is going to say the same thing. I just don't see it from an aspect of being friends. Like friends doesn't work for me to raise my kids. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm not, I'm not interested in being your friend and like raising a kid. Like if, if we happen to like split up and be a divorce, like, yeah, let's be friends and mm-hmm. co-parent our children. And like, cause that's what we would have to do. Right. Like that's, that's the ultimate outcome. Right. But at the same time, it's just like, no, I don't, I don't want to go into a relationship knowing that all I am is your friend. And I opened my legs and got pregnant by you because we were friends and, and you promised to, to help raise this child. To take care of you, basically. Whenever you are available to come around. Like, yeah. no, sir. Yeah, but like I said, you got to put culpability on a woman, too. Don't just sit there and put it on the man because, no, I'm, because, because, like, because, because they're okay with it. No, I don't. Th- I don't. I think any reasonable, regular woman that goes to work and works a nine to five and has like a just a normal life, okay, even if they got money aren't interested is it okay to have a relationship with someone who is not interested in getting married or having children i want to hear from a woman's perspective i think if if that depends like the only way that it would be okay is if the woman is okay with that too like if that's something that she's always been like yeah we can be together and we don't have to be married like some people think that like what is a piece of paper going to do to change like how i feel about you or to change like our union we live together we do everything like married couples do. We have cars in our names together. We got a house in our name together. The only thing that we don't have is a certificate that says that we're married. Mm-hmm. So, you or know, children or right. Or children. Some people are that way. I, and I genuinely respect that because, you know, we met a couple once that was like, <laughs> we'll never have kids. We'll never, ever like, that's not something that either one of us want. Five years later, they got a child together. Okay, <laughs> this baby is like ten years old now. Probably like, got two now. Yeah, like Probably got two of them now. Like, but but you just and both of them agreed on that. But mm-hmm. then you know, I think that's something that you should definitely discuss up front and being in a relationship with somebody. If 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 all you want to be is boyfriend and girlfriend, like forever and a day, and and whatever happens happens. In terms of like down the road, then we have that understanding it's a mutual agreement yeah. I, that's not something i would wait to tell somebody after being with them for you know three or four years that that was the part that, that was that was gonna be the point that i wanted to get to too is like that got to be something that y'all got that y'all got to get understood like straight out of the gate right it can't be something like you said five months down the road mm-hmm. six months and i'm coming to you saying that uh, it'd be great to have a child and then all of a sudden you say oh a kid i don't i <laughs> I wasn't getting with you to to have a kid or to be buy married. Your ass a puppy. So yeah, with that question, for me, same thing. With, same thing with me. I like you have to have that understanding, like straight out of the gate. Yeah, that's something you would have to just let be known. Like I, I feel like you can't hold on to that. And like, you have to be with the right person time. that really wants to, wants that same thing too. Yeah. That doesn't want to be married and doesn't want children. Want no kids. No, no kids. Yeah. Same. And, and then just see how it happens. But I, I feel like at some point. As you get older, just your mentality it changes starts to potentially change. for most. See, and that's where the problem will come in because you know you're like you know maybe maternal instincts will start. As, yeah, paternal too. Okay, mm-hmm. daddies too. It's that, like that, that clock ticking. Maybe I thought I didn't want to. I didn't want a child when I was 27, but now that I'm like 35 and 38 or whatever, like, and I'm established, like, <laughs> I'm solid, like, you know, there's nothing else in life that could make me more happier but to have a baby. You remember on Love at First Sight when that guy was with yeah. that one woman and she was like, she doesn't want any kids? Yeah. But they were already married and it's like, he wants kids and she's like, I don't want any kids. Right. She was like, well, okay, well, wait, maybe we'll we'll reconsider it and talk about it in a few years. You know, just think about being with that person and you're already married, and it's like they already told you that they don't want kids, and right now for two or three years, I don't even want to think about it. I feel like eventually, like, if that's the case, that ultimately, like, they're going to end up, like, getting a divorce because going back to to Jenny Mai, like, she said that a lot on The View, like, that she didn't, that she didn't ever want to have kids. Really? All the time, like, even with her husband, and she's like, my husband wants kids. She would say that. Like, my husband wants kids at the time. Mm. And And she had one with Jeezy, though. And she had one with Jeezy. But I feel like, really, like, you know, I don't know, because I I didn't really follow that story, but I feel like that probably, that might, 
that might have had something to do with why they weren't together. And he and he's like they seemed happy. She said we're friends, and she made it sound like it was just a it was a mutual type of agreement that they would break up. But wow, you know, one thing like for sure, I feel like will play a a, a huge factor in somebody making that decision is if so rather she didn't not even want kids. She didn't want kids, so that's why everybody was Man. so shocked that I mean. Anybody that watched the view knows what I'm talking about. Like y'all know I'm not yeah, making. She so, said that multiple times. Like I, I know I know the show, but like I said, I've never watched it. So yeah, yeah. she she and she gave her reasons as to why she felt that way at the time. And whenever she popped up with having a baby and pregnant with Jeezy, it was like, <gasps> oh, oh, <laughs> like you changed your mind really you quick. Did well, yeah. one, like like that is what ha- you know what I mean. So I do think that that can that can definitely create a lot of tension i saw something where i was reading an article about them getting a divorce i saw something in there where she said before like i don't know if it was on the view or where it was at but she said she do like like black men but she like them on the side <laughs> did you ever see that she just liked the meat okay she like like she like almost like the side piece like <laughs> i like black men but i like a little bit on the side almost like i don't even know what that means <laughs> what how do you like black men on the side girl what like a little bit on the side, almost like like you like them, but you just like them for that. Oh, okay. For the sex, not, I guess. Not anything other than Maybe that. Maybe not like lifelong. Sure. Or... Jeezy must have put that thug love in her life and she and she changed, okay? Hey. It, it only took one time. <laughs> he said that, that trap or die. He put that trap or die on her. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or trap or tie. Yeah. Hey, don't let that go over your head. Okay. <laughs> Is it possible to have sex with someone that fulfill all your sexual desires, including fantasies, dominatrix, fetishes, kinkiness with someone when you're not physically attracted to them. You only want them for that one thing. But can you can you do that you with do somebody that, that you're, not you're not attracted to? I don't think so. I don't think so. Especially when it comes to like really being fulfilled in really? all of those areas. Come on, babe. You can't, like, when I think about that kind of stuff, I'm thinking face mask. Okay, number one, your face is covered up. Hopefully, you know, perhaps yeah. you got something in your mouth so you can't see your teeth. Yeah, you know? but still, though, like, physically, <laughs> but you still got to be fa- physically attracted to them. I just don't feel like you can get fully, like, sexually pleased with completely with somebody that you just not all... In my mind, what I, I if just like can't. what if like they got exactly the pieces that you need, the, <laughs> okay. the right size penis and everything, right? <laughs> they got the right size meat, you know. She got the she got the 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 vagina that you've been looking bomb, for, Poonani. like where you like, damn, okay, I dream for this. And, but, but but she ugly as hell, or or he ugly as I don't know what. Okay, but but, but, that, but that's what I'm saying. Physically. But he gonna match your kinkiness. He gonna get on the level. Nah. He gonna pull out the swing. He about to pull out the feathers. We about to put the outfits on. Okay, we about to do the, I the nurse and doctor type thing. Like everything. I'm, I, I mean, maybe I. <laughs> You know what? Maybe I could. You heard of the song? She got a body of a goddess, but a face from hell. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. Maybe, maybe if she could put on like one of those dominatrix like masks, maybe I could get jiggy with it. And while she got that mask on, I can like visualize her being somebody else. Remember though, like For how real. much these like when you think about that kind of stuff, like it goes really, it goes really deep. far. Yeah, especially you know, like, when you're like, talking about like dominatrix. Somebody to match you on that, on that kinkiness, on that, on that fetish, level. on that drive, like. Like where it's like, man, I like to do all the nasty, freaky stuff, and you are gonna be right there but with I'm, me to do it. But I'm just not physically attracted to. It's gonna depend on <laughs> in what ways am I not physically attracted to her. I think that you could. I can't. I, I, I it, it depends. Ooh. I definitely feel like like you would want to because it's hard to come by people who do those things and can get into it like you can and, and not think like something weird or funny or not feel funny doing it. Because it makes them uncomfortable. You gotta have sex. Re- you gotta want to have sex really bad. I, that's what I'm saying. I don't think it's that. I think it's just that somebody's able to really fulfill all the desires, and your get, fantasies, and get on that level with you. Take you to that place where it's just like, oh my god! Like I dreamed that I could yeah. meet a girl that did all of these things, but you are the only one that do it and so <laughs> you do it because because you know she's gonna she's gonna she's gonna get you to the right place Yo. like take you all the way there knock you off like you gonna you gonna be like oh my god like where have you been my whole life and then you got the ugliest face but it's just like 
all I just, oh my God, like you have no idea. This this just co- just checked off every box of like my sexual fantasy. She, she like she, like I said, she don't have to be like the prettiest, but she would have to have like the banging body. Well, like, what if it's like, not even that? Like the fetish could be that she is like overweight or that she's like a midget or that she's, you know, like missing all her teeth. Like it could be, it could be a lot. You oh, know? if she's missing all her teeth, then she good because... <laughs> If you know, you know. But yeah, if she missing her teeth, like I wouldn't have no problem with that. I can't. I just said, I, babe. Hey, top me off and get me right. <laughs> <laughs> that it, that'd be easier access. But oh my gosh. But but yeah, I mean for for dudes and for any woman that's like super kinky that you know you want all that nasty stuff done to you, you might want that thing put up in your booty. You, you you know what I'm saying? You got some dudes out there that like pegging where they want a, a, a female to play with their booty hole. Well, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, this girl do everything. Like, everything that a, a, a regular person would be like, there's no way. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Like, and I don't care how much you love me. <laughs> Babe, you ain't going to do all of that for me? Hell no. I'm not going to do that. Not that. Mm-mm. Babe, if I needed if I needed the everything done, no, I need you to go all the way with me. That's just one thing you are gonna have to live without. I need you to go all the way with me, babe. Hey, I want you to I want you to dress up. I can only get a certain level of nasty out of my system. Okay, I can't I can't do the whole. I want you to put that 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 wrestler mask on that dominatrix Ugh. mask on your face. I can't even swallow my spit. <laughs> okay, thinking about some of that stuff. <laughs> You know, only certain women would do that. So they like, shoot, like if this the only is this the only place I'm gonna get it, then I'm I'm here yeah. for it. I want it, bro. I want all of it. Yeah, I I'm I'm just I'm just not there for that type of smoke. I don't want all the smoke like that. <laughs> like I just don't want it like that that bad for me. So you gotta answer it like Cause cause it, cause like I said, if she so had a could body. Could you do of, all of that and it, not be attracted to them was the question. <sighs> I say yes. I could, I, say I, absolutely. I could take I could take one for the team. Even if she got a body of a goddess and a face <laughs> from hell. I'll take one for the team. So, to, yeah, you think. If, if she, like, freaky deaky, how how I want her to be freaky with me. Because yeah, I think, I oh, man, I mean, I, I know there are women out there and there are men out there that's just like, man, I am, I am, woo. Hey, you get desperate and you just really, really need it. I so don't it's think just it's like, desperation. I think it's fulfillment. Fulfillment? Yeah. I feel like sometimes it might be both because you can't find what you really want. So it's like you, you, you rather settle for less. Then, Even though they're gonna give you everything you want, but right. it's not with the it's not with the ideal person that you want to do it with. Right. You gotta compromise, you gotta give and take a little bit. Yeah. So it's a little bit about that. Give and take. I think I mean, if you were to compare it to like that, I would say like if if that's just like trying to meet the perfect person that check all your boxes, tall, dark, handsome, hazel eyes, you know, size thirteen feet, big hands, long penis, like you know all these things, right? It's just like where the hell are you really gonna find somebody that really right. looks like a damn Ken doll, like right? You know, no, like no. But the question is, we talking about like somebody that just you really not physically attracted no, to at all? No, I know, but I'm okay. saying in terms of the comparing, in ter- if you're looking for somebody that check all these boxes, same we same thing in the bedroom that check all these boxes, like you're gonna find somebody that lacks something, so. I'm saying you're not going to find the perfect person. And maybe you end up getting a guy that has everything but the cute face. Yeah. If I was you single, know, it's if, the if, same thing. It's if, like, if I was single, like you ain't got to check off all them boxes for me. If you just into what I'm into, <laughs> hey, we can work it out. <laughs> we can work it out. So it's the same thing then. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's all I'm comparing it yeah, to. Yeah, it's yeah. just like you, you aren't going to find somebody that does all these crazy kinky fetish nasty get down and and dirty type things that you want to do but you might settle for somebody that's like close to it that you might be able to get them to do this because they do all of these things and, and they be way and, and they might be not you know they might not even be your type way less attractive of what you you know in regards to what you want but you okay with like them fulfilling your sexual f- what's your fat to say yeah <laughs> okay how <laughs> luda say it yeah so that there, y'all. That's that question. We'll do we'll do one more, y'all. Dang, we got I need, I need a some, lot of questions. We need more time. I need people to chime in on that one too. Yeah. What is the biggest turn off during sex? You can talk about it from your own perspective, or you can talk about it from women perspective. When your dick don't stay hard. Ooh. That and when you stink. 
Like if you got a stinky breath, like there's a list of things. I I can't keep doing it if you going in and out of of hardness. Okay, Mm -hmm. that don't work for me. It just turns me. It completely turns me off. Maybe it's me. Shit. You know, I don't know. But now I'm not even there anymore because you can't even stay hard. You know Mm -hmm. that your breath stinks. Okay. Okay. Like if you come down and you breathe on me and I and I get a wisp of that funkiness. (laughs) I can't go any further. And lastly, it's like if you like sweaty stink, like if you oh. dripping sweat on me, yeah, and and am I like sw- it's am, like wet. Am I sweaty, stinky? No, you don't. No, thank God. But no, like if you are sweaty and and like sweat is dripping on me, <laughs> I just feel like I just don't want to do it. You, like you, you talking about the type of sweat, like like basketball players when they just run yes, up and down the court like, and they just dripping, dripping. Oh, Oh my gosh, you have to move. Like we gotta put a towel, you gotta put some clothes. Like I don't know what it is you gotta do. <laughs> I cannot so, do sweat. So over sweaty dude plus musty. Oh yeah. Bad breath. And you can't stay hard. And then your penis don't get hard enough. Right. Okay. So are you are you trying to insinuate something? No. About me? You asked the question. I answered the question. Okay. okay. I, I didn't say nothing about you. <laughs> okay. I'm just I'm just checking. You know, I didn't. Some people like that, though. Like, what about farting oh, during sex? Because that, 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 that would be the first thing that would come to my mind about a turn off during sex would be a funky ass fart. And I ain't talking about a punani fart. I'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> a fart. Like. <laughs> bowel movement fart oh god and it's one of them that likes st- oh babe i'm gonna be like hell no nah, you got to stop you have to stop and you got to stop now fan like- the sheets <laughs> i feel like Take i would just throw off in my mouth out. that shit is nasty as hell oh my god <laughs> get your ass up like we done yeah <laughs> it's over. I'm sorry. You gotta go. Go. You got to go. Beach meat because uh, we can't. We can't go no further than this with that funky ass smell. Have I ever done that? No, babe. The- please don't ever do it. <laughs> yeah. Please don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. I'm telling you now, it's gonna be done. It's gonna be. A, you might as well get your ass up and say that, that you got to use it's the bathroom. It's over. It's done. Do not do that, especially yeah. if you under the covers. Okay, That's what I'm and you're saying. trying to get booty under the covers. And, That's the, and what I'm you- saying. <laughs> Yeah, we are done. I'm like I'm like that too. <laughs> oh shit! Okay. Well, the sweaty thing, <laughs> the sweat wouldn't bother me as far as a woman. I mean, as, I, as I long... feel like that's that's being specific. Like mm-hmm. that's me. But okay. I, some women probably, honestly, they probably don't mind that. Yeah. Like they probably. Really I think some get women like it. Yeah, some women really, really like because that. because it does like get that shit. sweaty. And yeah, they like to lick out on the sweat. Wet. And, I'm not tasting. They no want to taste. They want to taste the sweat. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? Like they like they in it they in it to win it. That is not for me. But yeah, definitely just to answer that question and think thinking from my perspective and just men in general, a woman like farting. <laughs> like a like a I got I agree with you on that. Farting. <laughs> oh God. The number one would be a funky punani. <laughs> just a stanky, musty punani. You know, like We already talked about this. She already know it. Like, like, where, where it smell like it just, just bad. You Why know what would I mean? you even do it? Like, especially, and then you're trying to hit it from the back too, and then it, it's just like, babe, it just makes it even worse. I can't. <laughs> you can't swallow. I can't. <laughs> and then, other than that, I would say, like, a woman that got like, ha- like hairy underarms, like hairy un- underarms, like me, like, like I couldn't have sex with a woman, <laughs> and she trying to hold like the bed post, and she put her arms up. <laughs> and it's just hair on her arms, like <laughs> absolutely not. Hey, but women have hair under their arms. I know. I, I way before you. Oh I, I, my god! W- way before you, I had sex with a female that was like that, and oh I was god. like, not like barbarian. Like it, maybe it was a little hair, but she might have had like a little. You like, see, how I'm just sitting. I'm still like, like uh, some nubs or something. Nah. Like you know how. It, curls no. up and stuff like no nah, it was it was after the stage of like shaving it's like bushy bushy like a little bush yeah it's like bushy a little bit it's like bushy like 
I can't do that. But I can't you can't, get jiggy like with it. Like some women just don't like to shave under their arms, though. Like they okay. just legitimately just don't like to shave. You know, hey, ladies, I got y'all. And, and it's and it's people that live in different parts <laughs> of the country in different countries that you know that that's their thing is like hairy, underarm, hairy arms. Yeah, under you know underarm hair. Yeah, some but women just don't me, like to do it. And I I feel like I've seen a lot of like YouTubers too that that don't shave under their arms. I'm not. Oh, playing. I think I've seen that too. Yeah, like it, that's not a uncommon thing for women to not want to do that. I like, know, babe, but it's just like, can you just do it for me one time? Can you just shave for me one time, for the one time? That's just your turn off, though. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> that's a turn off for me, yeah. Okay. Like, hairy underarms, and then, like, you know what I'm saying? You want to... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You want to put a woman's legs on your shoulders. Like, you don't want to put her legs on your shoulders and you start rubbing her legs and it's just like hair on the, on the legs, too. Oh, it's just my like... gosh, <laughs> babe. But... I'm, not, I'm not trying to be too nitpicky, but yeah, just like the hair. Okay. So, hair. So, hairy, hairy hair, arms. Ha- hair in places that it shouldn't be under, like for me, under arms and then like hairy legs. That's picky to me. Really? Yes, I, do. I think that. No, I'm saying like hairy legs, like. Kind of like a, almost like almost like on the dude level. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I can't do it. I'm. Not, I can't do I, it. I mean, I don't. Yeah. I mean, I be in the nail salon all the time, and women be getting their feet done, and they got hairy ass legs, like hairy hair, like hairy. Really? Yes. For me, my definition of a woman as feminine, you know, what's would so be crazy like though, shave legs. I couldn't even like shave until I was like thirteen or fourteen years old. So my so legs ass, were like that was forever. So, so you had boy legs at thirteen? Absolutely, I did. Okay. Hair under my arms and everything. I'd be playing basketball with with a and, big and, bush of and hair. Then, and then you do that jump shot, and it's just hair all under there. Huh? Yeah. Okay. It was. Okay. See. And, <laughs> until until my mom was like, "No, Asia, you gotta, Hell you gotta, nah. yeah. yeah." But that's because where I was, like, I yeah, I couldn't. I got you. Damn near be a girl. I had You're to, right. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but that, that's a whole other story for a different day. Yeah, yeah. This has been but a you, fun episode. But you told me that before, though. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. this has been okay. a fun episode, y'all. But okay. I know we ran over a lot on this. I'm gonna try to cut this down as as much as I yeah, possibly we got can. To. We but got to. thank y'all for uh. tapping in. Everybody have a, a great <laughs> week. Hopefully, we'll be able to post another episode because we've been trying to get ready for our horror fest and yeah, and everything man. on our movie channel and everything else we got going on y'all so if y'all don't know uh chime into our other channels asia and bj where we do music reactions asian bj react uh which is like non-music political stuff and also our movie channel reeling with asian bj yeah. and also go sub to us on our vlog channel y'all i know we've been slacking a little bit but y'all know we've been so so busy i Hit promise you we'll have button, some baby. content very very soon so uh, y'all chime in. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, smash the notification bell so you don't miss any videos from Asian BJ. And if ain't nobody else told you, I love you. And we're going to see y'all in the next video, <laughs> y'all. Don't ever grow your arm hair out. I'm <laughs> telling you, don't ever grow your arm hair out. It's probably some under there right now.